Today, I'm going to tell you how I shoot star trails using the Pentax K1's built-in intervalometer. Hello, my name is Tim Little. I am a nighttime landscape artist living on the east coast of Massachusetts on Cape Cod. This is my Pentax K1, and it is by far my most favorite camera ever to photograph with, especially to photograph the night sky. I recently did a rather lengthy review video of the K1, so if you've seen it, you know how much I love the camera. And there's a lot of great features, but one of the features that I absolutely love about this camera is the ability to ditch these. These old shutter release cables that we're used to having dangling from the tripod area or losing in the field or on the beach in the middle of the night when you're shooting night work. You don't need that with the K1. And yes, there are a lot of cameras out there that have come along to the same concept, whether that's Canon's touch shutter control or some other variant of it. For the most part, a lot of the newer cameras don't need that shutter release in order to do a long bulb exposure. The K1 has it all built in so that you can get upwards of 20 minutes on a single exposure, which is far more than I ever need. But let's say you want to go out and do some really nice long star trail work. So you want to get one of these shots where you've got 30, 40, 50 minutes, an hour of star trails. How can you do that without having a shutter release cable? Well, in most cases, you can't. There aren't a lot of cameras out there that have the built-in intervalometer. And the difference between just a regular old bulb switch and an intervalometer is the bulb switch will lock open the exposure for as long as you need it, and then you close it and you're done. But the intervalometer will give you some extra features, such as setting a specific exposure time to repeat for a certain amount of shots. And that's how a lot of people get their star trails. I personally think that's one of the best ways to get star trail work, you collect a bunch of images and you smush them all together later using Photoshop or star stacks to get those trails. The benefit to doing it this way is let's say something happens during the exposure. A car drives by, somebody walks by with a flashlight, any one of those things that's just gonna kind of ruin that shot for you. Imagine if you had had your shutter open for an hour and that happened at 55 minutes in and this was gonna be a single exposure. It could ruin the shot it could be a deal breaker and all that time is gone. But if you end up taking a series of shots over the course of that hour and merge them together later, if somebody were to walk by during just one of those shots or a car drives by, you could edit that problem out of that particular image and have it not really affect the greater collection. So it's really more of a, an insurance policy on your final shot. And that's the part that I'm going to talk about today. That's the process that I use. Now, I've had the K1 since 2017. I'm actually on my second copy of it because as you might have heard, I, I dropped my first one. Oops. But I'm on the second copy of it. And the settings within the menu system are... I would say they're not overly intuitive about setting up the intervalometer function. The great thing about the K1 is that intervalometer is built in and it is very usable once you sort of demystify it. Recently, somebody asked me to describe it to them and they weren't the first one. So I figured I'd make this video to just explain how I do it. Now, I think it's probably the best way to do it based on my use circumstance. Maybe you've got a better way or a different way and that's totally fine. But try my way and see if it works for you if you are a K1 owner and you want to do star trails. All of this is going to be shown to you in manual mode on the Pentax K1. That is the mode that I use to do my star trail work. And the first thing you want to do is just go in and do your usual stuff with your settings. Set your aperture, set your ISO, set your time. Keeping in mind that the longest amount of time you'll be able to go in manual is 30 seconds. And that's what I did for this shot here. Just a little bit of background on this one. This was 30 seconds, F 2.8 at ISO 800. And that's pretty much my go-to on star trails in darker environments or environments in which I don't have a light source directly in the shot or really brightening up the foreground. Okay, once you've got your settings in place, now is the time where we're gonna actually go 
into the camera and access that intervalometer function. So all that magic can automate while you're just enjoying the view, or maybe you've brought a second camera and you go off and shoot somewhere else while the star trails are being collected. Before we dive into the intervalometer settings, just make sure in your main menu under option C13 that the number is changed to two. This gives you the standby interval option that is going to flood into the menu we're going to be accessing. So just make sure C13 is option number two before moving forward. The next thing we want to access is the button that we would normally use to get to the shutter delay. So that two second or 10 second timer that you may use sometimes, that's where we wanna go. It's this button right here. So we're gonna get into that. And when you're in manual mode, you're gonna see a pretty fair amount of options going across here. The one that we're most interested in is the one all the way over to the right. So we're gonna scroll over here. This is your intervalometer. That said, it may not always say INT. The reason it says that is because the last time I accessed this menu, I was on INT. If you choose any of the other options, that's where the icon is going to sit when you back out of this. So just keep that in mind. You might not see INT, but it is all the way over to the right hand side. So we're going to get down onto that. And the most important things that you need to worry about are going to be right here. You don't have to worry about the three other options you see lined up to the right. It's INT that we're concerned about. Let's talk about the standby interval. This part is really important. I, I think it's arguably one of the most important parts of setting this up correctly. Setting it to minimum minimizes the amount of time from this shot to the next shot. And why that's important, especially when you're capturing star trails, is for every instance of a second that your shutter is closed, your camera is not recording the movement of those stars. So essentially, you could end up with gaps in your star trails when you try to get everything together in post-processing because you didn't record that small amount of time and that small amount of motion. That's why it's so important that even if you're using a regular old wired intervalometer, you set that to its absolute minimum wait time before the next shot starts. When you're ready to adjust your parameters, you see right in the lower left-hand corner, if you press the info button, you'll get access to that submenu. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And here's where you can change the standby time in between each shot and the number of shots. So by default, again, recommend you always leave this at minimum. The number of shots is what's going to be the wild card. So let's say, for example, you want to do 45 minutes of star trailing and you're doing 30 second exposures. Well, that means you're taking about two shots per minute. You'd have to double the amount of shots versus time. So 45 minutes of exposure time is going to mean about 90 shots. You can set this obviously for a very high amount or a very low amount. I generally like how star trails look somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour. So that usually means that I'm going to be doing say 90 to 120 shots. So once you get that all set up, you can just hit okay and get out of there. Now I mentioned you have these other options. Let's talk about this one here, interval composite. Think of this. Maybe you don't have a computer. Maybe you don't want to deal with software. Maybe you are not overly concerned about anything sneaking into your shot during this exposure time. And you don't think you're going to be doing any editing later. This may be an option for you to consider. The reason is this will essentially do the same thing that the last setting just did, but when it's all done, it's actually going to composite all of those images for you, which is pretty gosh darn awesome for a camera to do that built in. So again, you've got your standby interval, leave it at minimum. You've got your number of shots, set it to what you need. The difference primarily is going to be the composite mode. So you're going to see here, there's some options, average, additive, bright. I use bright. This is going to bring in everything in every shot that's producing or reflecting light and blend it into the image, which means it's great for star trails. Save process. So this is probably the most important thing that you need to think about here. If you do not check that box, what happens at the end of this is your camera does the compositing 
and essentially gets rid of all of the shots that it used to build that exposure. I recommend saving process because if something goes wrong, you don't like the final output or later down the road, you want to do the manual processing in Photoshop or star stacks, you will have all of those shots available to you. So that's something that I would highly recommend you keep in place unless for some reason you're worried about memory card storage, because obviously taking a hundred shots on the K one is going to eat up a pretty fair amount of memory pretty quickly. We're not going to talk about the uh, intervalometer movie record. Not interested in that for this particular tutorial in Star Trails, but I do want to address Starstream. Now, you might think that Starstream sounds exactly like what you're looking for because it's got the word star in it, and I get that. But this is really meant for people who like to do animated time lapses where you watch the stars building up during a video clip. That's what this is for. So if you're into that, it's a really cool functionality and you just go into it like your other settings and choose the video type you want to use. Again, the minimum amount of time between shots, the total number of shots should look pretty similar. You might be asking, Hey, you mentioned bulb mode earlier. Why aren't we doing it that way? Well, that is a good question. Some people like myself and my good friend, Ken Lee out in California, like to do moonlit star trail skies. And that often involves a really low ISO three or four minutes of exposure time and maybe 10 shots. And that gets you 30 or 40 minutes to get those nice trails baked into the composition. Unfortunately, when you switch into bulb mode, a lot of those intervalometer options disappear. And what that means to you is that the automation part, the part where you can set this up and then walk away, goes away. So you don't have that as an option anymore. I'm not sure why that was not included as an option in the K1. It's not a huge deal because you can still work within the confines of 30 seconds on the manual side. You'd obviously have to increase your ISO and maybe change your aperture to get the right exposure value. But historically, I'm just used to shooting at really low ISOs, which means you're going to have to shoot longer time to let that light bake into the image. That's more of a thing where I'll just get used to it. But if you're from Pentax and you're watching, that would be a cool feature. If you could just automate that in bulb mode for us, we would be very thankful. Here is bulb mode. So you can see what that looks like when you get into the same menu. And you'll notice that the options have gotten a lot lighter. If I scroll all the way over to the right hand side, you will have multi exposure, which in and of itself sounds like it could be helpful. And in some cases it might be, but it does take away the opportunity to set that intervalometer function that we talked about with that minimum wait time. You get the same compositing mode. So that same blend mode that we talked about in one of the other settings, and you can set the number of shots. But what you have to do in this case is you have to manually press the button in between each shot. So it is up to you to be the intervalometer. There is no automated functionality here. Where would this come in handy? That's a good question. So let's say you want to get a photograph of one thing and then turn your camera in a different direction and take another photograph of something else and have them blend. You can do that for however many number of shots you've predetermined here, but that's about all that is good for. It is not ideal for star trailing because again, you have to stand there and hit the button each time. Can it be done? Absolutely. The better way to do it is in manual mode. There you go. That is how I shoot star trails on the Pentax K1. I hope you found it useful. If you've used this process before and it's worked out well for you, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Also, if you've got another way that you think works better, is more efficient, or you just like, I'd love to hear about that too. I'm always interested to hear how people utilize their K1. And a lot of times there's always a better way to do something and I'm open to hearing about it. So thanks again for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.